Back in the spring of 1982, we decided we needed more capacity for our line striper. We wanted something that could haul more paint, change our bead system, and build something that would do the, our roads in the county, would strike both edge line and center line, and do it with a, a larger capacity so we could shorten our work time down in the summer. On July the 24th of 1982, we purchased a van from a local salvage yard that had been rolled over for $550. It was a one-ton chassis with a V8 engine automatic transmission, and we brought it back to the shop, uh, roughed in some of the wreck damage, and got the top back in alignment, changed the right front door and put a windshield in it, and from there we started to cut the van and make our measurements. The first thing we did was to remove the sliding door. And as you can see, the seats protrude back a little bit beyond, so we had to make the cab a little longer. So the body man started measuring and marking it out, and we cut the van back in this area here, and I'll let, you, let him take it from here, and he can explain what it is that we did. Then John can get in to explain how he mounted the uh, for uh, you know the, compared to what you would do, uh, I guess. We're actually painting it. You contracted it. Okay. I'm Mike Pettigrew. I work for the Columbia County Highway Department. I do body work here. Uh, they wanted me to tell you about this van. It cut it up across the back there, down the side. Welded this back in here. I put this uh, window in it out of a Chevrolet pickup truck. Uh, they wanted this left open to get access inside the bed here so I could get to it. Glass beads and that. And uh, I reinforced the inside of here with uh, channels of uh, metal had been up. And uh, we cut it across here and welded a channel in here to reinforce the side. I think that's about it. Okay, part of the components you're looking at here originally came from a Unimasco 9500. Mark right. It was uh, too small for what we wanted to do here in the county. So we disassembled it, removed all the guns and equipment off of it, built this assembly on the front of this van right here, mounted the guns, the wheels, made them on eccentrics so that they would turn whenever the going down the highway to follow the contour of the road and the equipment. Made a suspension system out of channel iron, turnbuckles, and incorporated a Myers snow plow lift that they use on the four-wheel drive pickups to raise it up and down. So you want to want to travel, just pick it up and go to the next job. Originally we needed something for a guide point. We mounted this wishbone out here with a small front wheel, trailing wheel, which got a little vibrate going down the road. So we just use a plain piece of rubber hose dragging along the road, which lasts a considerable length of time. It gives him an idea of where he's at on the center of the road to try to keep the line as perfect as he can. Our tanks is plumbed into the front system here with control valves here, or hand valves that you can change the tanks, whichever color paint you want to use. And we also bring our glass beads out of uh, a tank on the back, which originally came off of a, a sandblasting outfit. 
incorporate the air pressure to blow the beads up front. And the bead guns is mounted directly behind the paint guns. They're both Binks, Binks paint guns and the Binks bead guns behind them, which seem to do a relatively good job for us here in the county. Might want to show them how that outside gun retracts in and out. Okay, we did put the outboard gun, the edge line gun, on a pin system so that you can pull it in when you're normally driving. But you want to want to paint the edge line. Just slide it out, lock your pin back in place, drop your system, you're ready to paint the edge line. Now on the other side, we also have a a pin here, a rod here that slides out. A piece of hose will hang down similar to the front there. So when he wants to set his edge line, he can set it right off his middle line right here on his center line. That gives him his distance for his lane. If he wants to keep it a constant 10 foot or whatever, that gives him a, a good sight item there to go by. Everything is air operated. Electric solenoids, everything is mounted under the hood. Work off the main control panel, which he will show you in a few moments. The power assembly here is a four cylinder Wisconsin and a Quincy air compressor that was taken off the same Unimasco. It powered the whole equipment. Right now, all it does is power the air compressor to run the, the painting system. We have three 60-gallon tanks on there now, so that a 55-gallon drum of paint will fit in, in the tank without any problem. And on the front side is the original sandblaster tank, which we fill with beads. It is also pressurized to push the beads out forward. We had to mount an air tank on the side for a little supply to keep a constant supply in there because of the bigger nozzles in the air guns and the bigger bead guns. That's most of the equipment that's on it. Front end here is, is a belt and driven electric controlled timer that sets the guns off and on for your uh, skip dash and solid lines. We incorporated this in by figuring out a couple of different sizes of pulleys that would give us our right distance and to weld it onto the front wheel here. It's all electrically controlled inside on the main control panel so that he can do left, right dashes or whatever it needs to be done on the road. That'll Lots of bees around here. Okay, whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, this is a control panel that runs the whole machine. The driver does it all. It's a one-man operation. You got your power switch, which turns on all the power to all the paint guns or anything electrical on the machine. Okay. Your time that you flip your timer switch, that's for your center line, dotted line. Okay, this is your outboard switch gun when you're edge lining. You gotta have your power on all the time, and then these these two will run the other two things. Okay, this is your starter switch. You just pull it and push the button and everything starts. Might be able to start it here for you. That's all there is to that. Start it or stop it whenever you want. Okay, these switch here, these are just dead switches that we never have used for anything. They was on the panel. Okay, here's the control buttons for your center lines. It has a, uh, an illustration of each line that you want to shoot on the road. And all you got to do is hit the button. And that's what will that's what'll come out of the guns. It's as simple as that. Um, this is your accelerator right here for the back motor for your compressor. These are your uh, regulators here to regulate all your 
pressures whatever you happen to be running like at certain times of the year say like now it's getting colder the paint has a tendency to get a little thicker and, and flow a little harder so you can up the pressure down the pressure right on the road right as you're going when it, whatever you want to do uh, these buttons here this will retard or advance your dotted line so you can uh, once you, when you change your line going down the road you just hold one one or the other of these buttons and you get lined up with the old dotted line then you release it and then what that does it it, it stops or starts your starter retards it or advances your your uh, timer and uh, that'll get you right back on the money on the old line uh, these here are your uh, caution lights, which are on the top for your for your light bar. Uh, oh, this switch here, this will raise or lower your whole unit out in front for uh, when you're stopping and starting. Um, basically, that's about it for the running of the machine. Uh, a couple things on the back here you might want to take a look at. Okay. Okay, anytime you have an air-driven machine, they have a tendency to build up moisture from the water outside. So what we, what they've done here is they've, they've uh, put on uh, two water separators. As the air flows through here, these have uh, a type of uh, oh, uh, material in there that separates the water from the air somewhat so we don't get so much moisture up into our uh, regulators and that because the regulators will have a tendency to blow out if they get a lot of water in them and you have to change them all the time and uh, you can shut the air off right here with this handle to the regulators at any time if you want to do any work on them or anything and as you can see this is the regular the piping the plumbing is you'd call it for the air which all comes from the back up into the front here and all the electrics everything's all confined right as one unit here and basically that's about it okay. one thing else I did want to mention was the reason we mounted all the guns on its own suspension system was to keep a constant distance from the highway we figured if we mounted them on the machine itself, the weight of the machine from full load to empty load would vary enough, would change the width of the line as you went down the road. This way, everything stays exact same height off the highway and the line stays exact same width. You don't have a variation in it. Same here. I don't feel so bad. Now. Yeah. Didn't use all the paint that's all over it, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> At the end of each day, we add two to three gallons of solvent in each of the tanks that we use for the day, and then we flush the system, and these are our drains, our cleanouts to uh, get the solvent out of. 
other than that, that's about all the, the work that we do on a daily basis as far as preparing the machine for the next day or for storage. Annually, we do clean the insides of the tank. Uh, most of the time in the spring, the paint is uh, set up better, better and is easier to remove the residue and stuff that's inside the tanks. We do use a lead truck with this machine whenever we're doing center line. The lead truck, of course, has a sign on it that says line striper head and arrow telling them to keep to the, to the left of the striper of uh, the oncoming traffic. Also, in that lead truck, we haul the excess beads that we knew, use for the day's work. When we are edge lining, we put extra beads on this machine and we edge line with one person only and that's the operator of this truck. We feel that it's very important to have your own line striper as our chip and seal program runs throughout the total summer and today is October the 2nd of 1990 and today is the last day of our chip and seal program. We still do have some contract hot mix jobs to be done. If we did not have our own machine we would have to wait so late in the fall to do all the roads or we have to get a contractor in here three or four times a year. This way Normally when a road is hot mixed, within one to two days after the hot mix is completed, we are able to do our center lining and then of course we do our edge lining as soon as we can thereafter. On the chip and seal, we leave them set several days and then we broom the excess slag off. Then we are able to go ahead and put our lines on. The savings and the convenience is what makes it well worth having your own machine. The savings factor isn't great uh, in that you still use the same amount of paint but the way it used to be years ago we had to get the paint in in five gallon buckets you had to each open each and every one you had to stir them and then you had to dump them into the pot you go down the road a couple of miles and you had to stop and refill the truck which it meant more people uh, more capacity to carry on your lead truck and uh, it took uh, more people really than we have. Nowadays we can buy our paint in 55 gallon drums. We have an air agitator that works off the compressor on this truck that agitates the paint. Then we have an air pump that will pump the paint into these tanks, into these paint pots. The paint pots are 60 gallon, therefore we can put a full 55 gallon drum into each one and if we have to add a couple gallons of thinner we have the capacity to do it. It does save a lot of time in both handling and in shipping costs and we feel that that is where our savings is. We've been able to take a five man crew and get it down to two men on center line and one man on edge line. seconds you want to be. Mm -hmm. Not like when I do uh, do this for uh, weddings, I usually have each picture.
for it. Yeah. <laughs> at the last minute, don't they? 